Hey everybody, this is Mike Jones from the Connection Games and Comics with my Friday Night Magic draft video from June the 21st. This first. This is a Return to Ravnica block draft. A uh, small turnout tonight. We only had 10 players. The Grand Prix Modern Masters is on in Vegas, so a lot of the Vancouverites have headed down to Vegas to try their luck out down there. Hope they're all doing well. Anyway, so we'll get right into it here. Um, learn some valuable lessons in this uh, draft this week. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Uh, and don't fall in love with your first pick, especially when your first pick is three colors, as you'll see here. Alright, so I've got Ready and Willing uh, as my rare in this in the Dragon's Maze pack. This card is bomb-ish. It can certainly win games if played at the right time. Uh, also, Gruel Warchant at the uncommon slot. Jelen thinks is very good. Uh, I hate passing Gruel Warchant. <laughs> I really want to build that deck one of these days. But Ready and Willing, ah, you know, didn't have a lot of luck with it last time. I want to give it another try. I really don't like drafting three colors right from the get-go. And when you pick a card like Ready and Willing, you're kind of locking yourself into to three colors. And you... You know, which one's your splash color? Are you going to pick one of those two? You got Orzov, probably is the right choice there. Anyway, so I pick up Ready and Willing here. Uh, not entirely sure if that was the best option. So I've got a Rot Farm Skeleton that keeps me in green, black, white. Uh, there's a Mutant's Play, Rakdos Drake. Probably would have been a better catch and release. Yeah, not, not a great card, not terrible. Battering Crisis is in the colors I'm in. Um... You know, if I was wanting to cut Ors off, I think Rakdos Drake would have probably been a better pick here. Uh, armed and Dangerous, so man, I've got a strong signal I'm sending to my left uh, with the Gruel War Chant and then an Armed and Dangerous back to back. I'm very surprised that the player to my left didn't end up going into Gruel. The uh, player to his left did. Uh, anyway, this is a 10 man pod too, so the cards aren't going to come back quite as frequently. A lot more cards were opening, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, I pick up the Rot Farm Skeleton there. Hmm, probably not the uh, probably not the right pick. I probably should have picked up the Rakdos Drake and tried to force more ores off. Here I get a choice of Maw of the Obsidat. That card is amazing, can really blow up in games. I've quite enjoyed having that card every time I've played it, uh, either online or in real life. There's another Rakdos Drake and a Tithe Drinker, both really good ores off cards. And a Punish the Enemy. Wow, okay, so... Getting a strong red signal, n totally ignoring it. <laughs> Again, I shouldn't have fallen in love with my first pick. So if, I, if there's any new drafters out there watching, the lesson is, so I pick up the Maw here, uh, don't fall in love with your first pick. If you're getting a good signal, picks two, three, and four, jump on it. Uh, I think I would have had a much stronger deck if I had just ignored my you know, um, original signal and gotten into red... Um, Red blue and gone is is it with maybe a gruels or a simic splash, um, you know, simic gruel splash. I guess I could have done. Anyway, not to be. So there's not much in this pack. I got a maze glider, surly gatekeepers is the only thing in my colors, but I'm under under excited about a gatekeepers. There's a runner's bane there in blue as well. So you know, like again, I'm getting a pretty good is it signal, but I'll ignore it. <laughs> To my own peril. But as we see, I do pretty well with the deck this week. Not because my deck is good, but because I have great big horseshoes. You know where. Um, the the deck really shouldn't have carried me on to the win. It did. Anyway, so I'm going to pick up the Maze Glider here. So now I'm into my fourth color already. So I've got green, white, black, and blue. The only color I'm not in is red, which is the one I've gotten the most the strongest signal. You know, here I get a Beetle Four Mage. Wow. You know, the Rug deck would have been pretty good pretty sick I'm not gonna lie and I get a warped physique uh, kind of removal if I'm gonna go into the blue now so maybe I'm black white blue splash green I mean I can just play the willing side of ready and willing and forget about the rot farm skeleton uh, well uh, so I'll take a look at what I've got this is an FNM so it's not it's okay to take a peek every now and then uh, we're not real strong on enforcing tight tight play here but uh, anyway so I'm gonna pick up the warp physique here it's kinda removal passing a beetle form mage you know it hurts it hurts a little bit but uh, 
And who knows, I don't think I end up even playing the Warp Physique. And I get a Vyashino First Blade? What? <laughs> so, huge signal. Red, white, Boros seems to be open, and Thrashing Moss Dog is quite good, though, so it's really hard to figure out what the signal is in the Dragon's Maze pack. First Blade should not be coming fifth pick, I guess. Um, means that Boros is probably pretty open. But I'll pick up the Moss Dog here. If I'm playing green at all, I can get play that. Uh, here we get an Armored Wolf Art. Azurta Druid. Again, I really wish I had a red, gone red, green, blue. Love the Zerta Druid. That card, you know, pings for one a turn, if nothing else. There's a Woodlock Crawler in there as well I could have picked up. If I want to go more the blue route. But I still, you know, focused on my ready and willing. and So I'll pick up the big fat Wolf Rider here. And I get past the Crisis Incubation. That card should not be in this pack. And a Windrake. Okay, blue is wide open. Blue red, it looks like, was still wide open. There's no red in this pack, but I think I get some good red in the next pick pack. There's a Boros Clue still in there. So, but certainly Incubation and Windrake coming around this lake. This late, uh, good signal. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna pick up the Incubation here, mostly because I needed one. Uh, but also because it's just a good card, and if I do end up doing the green, blue, white, or green, blue, black, or maybe I'm doing four colors if I can get some fixing, uh, that card is removal. So here we get Jelen Sphinx, uh, Murmuring Phantasm, and Deputy of Acquittals. Wow, okay, so blue, white, maybe? <laughs> what? What's going on? Pick up the Jelen Sphinx, not sure you know what I'm doing anymore, just picking up good cards, I guess. And here I get a Slesnia Clue Stone or a Demir Clue Stone. Not sure which one's a better pick at this point. I've got quite a bit of blue, green, white, and black. So I'll pick up the Slesnia Clue Stone. Quite happy that I did that. And here we get three Clue Stones, all with red in them, which I haven't picked up any red yet. It's the only color I haven't got. And a Mutant's Prey and a Crypt Incursion. So it's not much to choose from here. I'll pick up the Mutant's Prey. And here we get Morgue Burst, more red, and another Mutant's Prey. So three cards that have red, and a Mutant's Prey. So I guess I'll pick up another Mutant's Prey, and maybe I'm going to get some Simic stuff in the next pack. Um, I get an Orzhov Clue Stone, or Riot Control, or Morgue Burst. Uh, the Orzhov Clue Stone might help. Maybe I'm splashing black in a... I don't know. I really don't know what I'm doing at this point. This deck, this draft, this first pack... I am all over the place. This is not a good example of how to do a draft, folks. Do not use this as... So I get a last pick of Riot Control. Probably not going to play that either. And I take a quick peek through what I picked up there and realize that I've made a giant mess of things. I have almost no removal except for the Mutant Sprays and the... the Crasis Incubation. And I've got very little in the way of low drops, so... Not real happy with how that pack went. So let's see what I get in this pack. So get a foil gridlock or molten primordial. Okay, Undercity Informer, I guess, could go on my deck. Not really in red, right? Uh, so Ripscale Predator's not playable. Merfolk, I get a Gilgate. Ember Beast is, would have been nice if I was in red. Uh, and Angelic Edict is some removal. So as I just mentioned, my removal package out of the first pack didn't look that hot. Undercity Informer or Gridlock, I don't know, I think I, I hate first picking a common uh, but Angelic Edict is hard removal in this set and sometimes exiling things is very useful so I will pick up the Edict here and try not to whine too much about it alright, I need to wait for a bit there and we're gonna get Second pick, so I got a Gyre Sage, decent. Uh, Corpse Blockade, Nimbus Swimmer, Miming Slime, Hands of Binding, Night Watch, Sky Knight Legionnaire. Wow, but I mean, there's some picks in here in my one of my three colors. So this is only second pick, but I'll pick pick up the rare. So that's a decent sign. Although I'm kind of confused because I thought I passed a pretty strong red green signal. Uh, in the first 
pack, so I'm sort of surprised to be seeing good green card coming. Uh, second pick from that player. But uh, anyway, so I get Guardian of the Gateless here. That'll work. Thank you. I love that card. Another Angelic Edict. Pit Fight. Could go in my deck. Uh, or Rust Scarab. So, uh, some decent picks here. Nothing Orzavi, so I'm a little... Uh, not, not too concerned yet. I've got some decent Selesnia pickups here, so maybe I'm a Selesnia deck and who knows what I'm splashing, blue or black or maybe we'll get lucky in the third pack. Yeah, another Sky Knight Legionnaire, a Smite, uh, Metropolis Sprite if, Sprite if I'm gonna do the blue thing, Undercity Plague and Balustrades by Alright, Balustrade Spy is a good creature. Smite's a nice piece of removal. But uh, I like the Balustrade Spy. It's in one of my four colors. <laughs> uh, I think I've, I've sort of said in this pack that I'm not going to do the blue. and You know, I didn't really open up a blue bomb uh, or a Simic bomb. So let's try and stick with the ready and willing plan. We'll stick with our three core colors and try not to play the blue. So then I get Shadow Slice, Aerial Maneuver, Spire Tracer, Prophetic Prism, ooh, Sun Home Guild Mage, and a Court Street Denizen. I think given the issue I'm having with colors and the number of cards, the Prism's a pretty easy choice here. It's going to do the fixing. Uh, this is the first piece of fixing I've picked up. Uh, if I do end up four colors, that's going to be key. Now we've got Death's Approach, Sage's Road Denizen, Verdant Haven, then another more fixing and a Smite. This is. I probably should have picked up the Verdant Haven here again if I'm going to be doing the three or four colors. Uh, Verdant Haven probably would come in pretty handy. Trying to not do the blue thing though, so gateway shade there, I guess, is an option. But smite's just, you know, between death's approach and smite is my removal choices. But both of them have preconditions. One, smite requires you to have a creature to block with. Death's approach requires you to have stuff in the yard. I think smite's probably a little easier to pull off, so I'll pick up the smite there and get punished for it right here. I should have taken the, uh, let's get another smite I can take, and a mugging. There's no one playing red? What the hell? Alright, that should not still be in the pack. You know, if I had gone the green-red plan, uh, maybe the person to my right, which is my friend Jamie, wouldn't have gotten into into Gruel, uh, and I could have had a pretty sweet deck. Anyway, so I'll pick up a second smite here, and now I get Assault Griffin, Another Nimbus Swimmer, Night's Watch, Armor Transport, totally lost. Yeah, Night's Watch, this has got evasion, or Assault Griffins have got evasion, that's decent, let's do that. hope that wasn't a Night of Obligation I passed. Be kind of silly. Leyline Phantom, Slate Street Ruffian, or Wildwood Rebirth. Really the only things I'm looking at there. So I'll pick up the Ruffian, it's underwhelming. Not something you really want to play. Here I get a Scab Clan Charger or Pit Fight. Uh, that's a tough choice. I'm worried about my creature count at this point. I don't know if I've got good Pit Fight targets in my deck. So, And we get a Rip Scale Predator, Metropolis Sprite, Spell Rupture, or Merfolk of the Depths. Blech. Metropolis Sprite. Rip Scale Predator is probably the best card in the pack. Metropolis Sprite, if you need two drops, is quite solid. Very playable. Uh, I'm going to pick up the card that might go in my green deck, so I get the Merfolk with the Depths. I hope I don't have to play that. And you're getting nothing. Bio Shift, I guess, just to keep sending the signal. Uh, cutting off the green cards. And I get Guild Scorn Ward and something else. And my last pick's a Hydro Form, so nothing, nothing too telling there. Those are pretty typical last picks, I think. Yeah, all right. Let's get into this return to Ravnica pack. So I've got Aerial Predation, Armory Guard, Golgari Long Legs, Selesnya Sentry, Explosive Impact, Stonefair Crocodile, Jaggerdrome Imp, Golgari Decoy, Cackler, and Conjured Currency. Boop. Sigh. All right. So it's really between Daggerdrome Imp, Golgari Decoy, uh, 
I think Decoy can just win you games. You know, you put him down, he's got the lure effect built in, and your opponent can't, or has to block him so you can get some stuff through. Here we go. Uh, Golgari, Gilgate, Sluiceway, Scorpion, um, Centaur's Herald, Knightly Valor would have been nice, Underworld Connections. Do I want card draw? That might have been a better choice, I don't know. Sluiceway, Scorpion, though, he's solid. Scavenge card in my colors. I really haven't stopped to look. So there's another. There's a guild gate I could take there. The guild gates seem to be getting snapped up. I'm not seeing a lot of them come come by. So, so is it Knightly Valor or Sluiceway Scorpion? It comes down to. I don't really have a lot of populate targets. So let's pick up the Scorpion. Scavenge, maybe those mutant preys become playable if I get enough scavenge cards. I've got a couple already, I think. What? Mercurial Chemister, Augur Spree. Oh, jeez. If I was only in <laughs> the blue red deck. Ah. Anyway, Dagger Drome Imp is the only card there that's kind of in my colors. I'm going to pass a Chemister. Uh, make somebody's day, I guess. If anybody's in red blue, this table will seem to have. No red drafters for some strange reason, or very few red drafters. Again, there's ten of us at the table. I think in the end there was three drafters in red. Anyway, Centaur's Healer. Centaur Healer, that's strong. Good three drop. Pretty starting to realize at this point I'm pretty low on low drop, so I got a Civic Saber, another Guild Gate. But I'll just I'll take the Healer. That's uh, he's good and playable. I don't know what my colors look like yet, so you get a Phantom General, Thieving Glee, Concordia Pegasus. What? Righteous Authority? Oh boy. Blue USA, Team USA would have been good. And again, an Avenging Arrow, which I think is what I end up taking here. But wow, Righteous Authority? Ugh. The card can be difficult to deal with. So was it that third or fourth pick in this pack? Uh. uh who knows? What, what would have come if I had taken a different direction in the first pack? I get Fencing Ace, Courses Accord, Catacomb Slug, uh, Judges Familiar. So it's really Fencing Ace, Judges Familiar here. I'm looking for some low drops. Uh, I'm starting. I haven't really paid too much attention to what my curve looks like at this point, but I got a deep fear that it's not not doing too well at the low end. So then I get Sewer Shambler. That's sweet. Oh, you have Mizzet Dracogenius? Really? Yikes. Oh, I'm so kicking myself. Drudge Beetle, Sewer Shambler. Wow. And I'm going to pass it. I'm going to pass the great big dragon bomb. Sewer Shambler it is. I need some low drops. And here I get Courses Accord, Horncaller's Chant. Oak Street Brawler or Oak Street Innkeeper, whatever that is, unplayable card. <laughs> Pick up a Courses Accord here. Eh, it's not exactly what I'm looking for in terms of low drops, but six power for six mana seems okay. And I get Golgari Charm, Perilous Shadow. I think I got too many four drops already, so let's take the Golgari Charm. Maybe I'm gonna play that. It's decent. It's you know, it's enchantment hate. Look at that. So it's really between those two, Parallel Shadow or Golgari Charm. But sometimes regenerating each creature you control can be the difference too. So here I got a Karaz to Monitor. Okay, well that's decent. Deviant Glee, Sphere of Safety. Uh, Monitor's good. More Scavenge. Now I get nothing. So here we get Backlash, Downsize. Con this is my pack back. I'll take the Backlash, I guess. That would be awful. Since my creatures seem to cost a lot. Here I get Destroy the Evidence, Deviant Glee, or Urban Evolution. All not really. Well, Deviant Glee is a very playable card, so I'll take that. Maybe I just put that in as a pump trick. Not that I have a lot of low stuff. And I can pick up a Cremate here. I don't know why I get two last picks, but I do. Something is screwed up somewhere. So anyway, here's the deck I end up building. As you can see, I only have two two drop creatures and three three drop creatures. Um, thanks to some deck building aid from Eddie, uh, who was not in the draft, um, I've sort of taken out, you can see my last four cuts over there on the right, uh, mostly containing white, uh, 
just to try and cut down the amount of white I need early so that I can be mostly black green uh, treat white kinda like a splash for a late courses accord ready and willing edict the maw um, you know, it was a real toss-up for me between Assault Griffin and Centaur Healer. Centaur Healer is a 3-drop, but if I'm doing white as a splash, the chances of me playing it on turn 3 are not so great, but he's even okay coming out a little bit later. Gaining 3 life can sometimes be a difference maker. Um, but Assault Griffin has evasion, but my 4-drop slot was way overloaded uh, creature-wise. The deck ends up firing just fine, though. I mean... I've got three mana fixing, they all can give me white, so I've got a total of six white sources. Um, seven lands plus two black, and so nine black and nine green sources all together. Uh, so it's decent for a three color deck, I decided not to play the blue. I had some pretty decent blue as you saw in the first pack, but I stuck away. I tried to get away from it in the second and third packs. Um, I think I could have drafted. It turns out my son who was sitting to my right was in the exact same three color combination as me and the person to his right had started out in Orzov and then switched into Boros when it was pretty obvious that nobody to his left was taking it and he was, you know, he got past double Sky Knight Legionnaire. Anyway, that was Matt and I ended up playing him in the third round. You can see what his deck was like. It was pretty sick. Um, and the person to my left had opened up a really good gruel or good Orzhov rare as well and had really stuck to that so we had a big huge mess in terms of what people were drafting anyway thanks very much for watching I tried putting in some background music this time uh, don't know if that's gonna help or hinder but uh, here's the credits for it if uh, you like my videos please like and subscribe if you see anything you would have done different it'd be great to hear your comments uh, on the files and if you're ever in Vancouver, we'd love to see you in the store one day. Thanks, everybody. Have a great one.